Welcome to another episode of Make Your Mind Your Best Ally. And today I have my friend and guest, Dr. Caitlin Prickett. And we're going to be talking about sleep. Yes. How the importance of sleep. So um, why don't we start with the general guidelines for uh, sleep requirements for, for athletes? Sure. And, and sleep is so vitally important for everyone, but especially athletes. Yeah. So they've done a lot of studies with how much sleep athletes need mm -hmm. for performance, recovery, cognition. Yeah. And they found on average about eight hours is ideal. Oh, wow. But some studies even say longer especially oh if you need a longer recovery uh -huh. or you have a big performance or match mm -hmm. coming up, you may even need more sleep prior to those higher wow. energy requirement activities. Huh. And does it matter if I go to bed at midnight and then I wake up at nine or 10? That's a great question. Uh -huh. So with sleep, the actual being consistent with when you go to sleep and when you wake up is very important. Yeah. So it's not just about the amount of hours that mm -hmm. you're getting, but when you're going to sleep and when you're waking up. Okay. Because you have a lot of things in play in the body, things like your circadian rhythm, your metabolism mm -hmm. that all go into effect. Even your body temperature, because your body temperature actually changes okay. while you're asleep. And so with that internal clock that you have, it is important to to go to bed at a certain time and wake up at a certain time and try to be consistent because those inconsistencies have shown ah. to increase risk for things like heart disease and diabetes. Okay. And so ideally you want to, you know, go to sleep when it's dark and wake up when it's light. Okay. It can get, you can get into a lot of more details about that, mm. but generally you want to try to go to sleep at the same time and wake up at the same time. Okay. And would you say the earlier you go to bed, the better? Yes. So most people are going to go to sleep nine, 10 o'clock, mm -hmm. wake up, you know, six, seven o'clock. And mm -hmm. in the United States, yeah. the sun is going to be down when you go to sleep and it's going to be up when you wake up. Oh, okay. Well, just ideal. Yes, to exactly. Okay. That's it. Huh? That's interesting. Good. Yeah. I, I thought it was less. <laughs> no. I'm like, yeah, four hours will be good. No, no. It's, it's actually more. You Some some studies say seven, some say nine, but on average it's wow. eight. And we all, even if you're just a regular person, you still need, you know, seven to eight hours of sleep as well. Wow. Okay. So what are the consequences of sleep deprivation for your mind? Like decision making, mental resilience to discomfort, et cetera. What? So when you're sleep deprived, so when you're not getting sleep and whether this is from you know, not getting sleep after one night or over consecutive yeah. nights, that lack of sleep definitely affects your cognitive and physical performance. Mm -hmm. So with cognition, you're going to have decreased, well, decreased reaction times. So it's going to take okay. you longer to react yeah. to certain things, yeah, like I, longer to react to the ball coming towards you, longer for you to react with hitting the ball with your tennis racket. Right. And I'm sure the timing, because timing is super important. Yes. You're supposed to hit it at a, at a certain time. And I can see how and that so would be. And so even up. if it's just like a microsecond delay mm -hmm. from lack of sleep, that's still going to affect your performance. Yep. Yeah. And so sleep is really when our mind and our body recuperates and mm -hmm. restores itself. And that's really when the mind can get back to its normal high functioning mm -hmm. capabilities. Right. And so when you do have that lack of sleep, your decision making is going to be affected. Yeah. You're going to be more tired throughout the day. Mm -hmm. You're not going to to make the most profound decisions as you would when you had a restful night's sleep. Yeah. Yeah. It also is going to affect your stress level too. Huh. So you're going to notice that you may be more anxious or more stressed cranky. when you're sleep deprived. <laughs> exactly yeah. cranky. Yeah. And so, yes, for the mind, sleep is so important for yeah. that restoration and recharging. Yeah, I would think because, you know, we're under the sun. There's going to be wind. We might be losing. Uh, you know, there might be noise. So all that stuff is, is already hitting us. And now if... We haven't slept, and then there's more. Yes, and there have been studies that have shown that if you're extremely sleep-deprived, those symptoms mimic that of alcohol intoxication. 
Wow. So being fumbly, having droopy eyes, slurred speech, confusion. So extreme sleep deprivation is the same thing as, you know, drinking a lot of alcohol. Wow. (laughs) So that's how important sleep is for your mind and for your health. Wow. So are there levels of sleep, like uh, when you're, you know, is it deep sleep and... Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there are levels of sleep. There are actually uh, four stages of sleep. Um, some are more restorative than others. Uh, when you first go to sleep, you're going to circulate between you know, stage one, stage two sleep. Mm-hmm. The deeper sleep is like the, the REM sleep that you've mm-hmm. probably heard of. In order to get through those different stages, and your body goes through the different stages as yeah. you sleep. And sometimes when you get to the fourth stage, you're going to go back to stage one. So okay. you go through these multiple cycles of those, ah. of those sleep stages. If you're not giving your body a chance, the time mm-hmm. to go through those sleep cycles, then that's going to affect, are you getting restorative sleep? Are you yeah. only getting light sleep? Yep. And there are these like fitness trackers. Like, of course, I wear the week. Yeah. It tracks my sleep and it can tell me what percentage of REM sleep, deep sleep, how many times I was awake at night. Wow. Because it all affects Mm -hmm. um, your overall sleep cycle. Yeah. And you could probably tell what's coming up. Like I remember one time we were talking and and you were saying, yeah, I I could see Jeffrey's levels going down. And, you know, that means you might be susceptible to something. coming. Yes. If you're coming into like an acute effect infection. Yeah. um, It can show first in your sleep. Because wow. your body is working to fight off an impending infection. And so wow. your sleep is going to be disruptive because huh. of that. Let's talk a little bit more about it. And, you know, we're not being sponsored by this, but I, I find it so interesting. I used to use the Apple Watch and there was an application, but it wasn't really that precise, I found. So what is what is it that you like so much about the, the device that you have? Yeah, so the device I have is a Whoop. It's a fitness tracker, and it tracks everything from your sleep mm-hmm. to your strain. So strain in, in Whoop terminology mm-hmm. is how many times did you have stress, whether that's good stress from like exercising, getting yeah. your heart rate up, or just stress in everyday life. And so it gives you a strain calculation. Mm-hmm. Based on that strain calculation, it tells you what does your sleep need for that day to have optimal recovery because oh, wow. recovery is actually where is indicative of how our body has rested mm-hmm. and is ready to tackle the next day. Right. So if I have a high strain day, whether it's through exercise or stress, my whoop is going to tell me, okay, you need to go to bed at this time oh my God. to have this percentage of recovery. If you don't get that sleep, requirement or recommendation, yeah. then your recovery is going to be lower the next day. And it's actually a percentage. So like, oh, you're 50% recovered or 75%. Mm. That's and okay. if you don't recover that night, it kind of keeps compounding on itself mm. or it kind of mm. gets worse and worse. Wow. And you can actually feel it subjectively. You can feel, wow, you're yep. not as alert. You're more tired. Mm-hmm. Uh, you may be a little bit more irritable, like yeah. we mentioned They're before. In the day. You definitely feel these effects. But to be able to objectively see it on a device that's incredible. It makes a big difference because you can see your numbers. There's power in seeing your own yeah. numbers yeah. that are individualized to you. Mm-hmm. And to really and see, you can play around, make your own experiments. Yeah. I'm going to sleep longer tonight and see how your numbers change the next day. That's cool. Change the way your sleep environment is or change your sleep yeah. hygiene and see how it affects your sleep stats hmm. for that evening. Wow. That's so cool. All right. Let's see. It's all very interesting. Sleep is sleep is amazing. <laughs> I find sleep so interesting. Yeah, I I really have had to change my my the way I think about sleep because I I never used to get enough. I've definitely prioritized, you know, in in learning more about sleep, whether it's with my own patients or with my own personal experience. Mm-hmm. Realizing that at night. You really just need to shut it down and be like, you have to prioritize sleep. Yeah. Be like, my sleep is more important than this work I need to do. Exactly. It's more important than that TV show I'm trying to yeah. watch. You know, just shut <laughs> it down binging. and sleep. Just like you don't eat fast food every day yep. or you don't stay sedentary every day. Mm-hmm. The same thing needs to apply for your sleep. You need to get your sleep. Yeah. Yeah. So my next question <laughs> is about naps. Are naps useful and do they add to the sleep requirements for an athlete? 
<laughs> naps are very interesting. There has been a lot of research on naps, and it's interesting in that a lot of cultures, naps are a part of the yep. everyday routine, the everyday work life. Everyone takes a nap. In the United States, about one third of Americans mm -hmm. take naps. Now, naps can be restorative or they can sabotage your sleep as okay. well. So with naps, the timing when you do the nap is very important. Okay. So ideally, you want to do, if you're going to take a nap early in the afternoon, Okay. Not late in the afternoon, not close to bedtime, because then that's going to affect mm, going to sleep. Your body thinks it's going to sleep, probably. Exactly. Oh. So with taking into account the circadian rhythm and the sleep-wake cycle, ideally early afternoon is the best time for a nap. Okay. Now, the duration of the nap is very important. You're not going <laughs> to want to sleep for two hours. You're thinking of terms of like power nap. Okay. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe some studies say 45 minutes, but nothing past that. Okay. So it needs to be a short nap yeah. just to restore yourself. Now, naps can be used not just for the days you feel tired, but days where you know you may be coming onto a day where you're going to have some sleep deprivation. You may be traveling okay. for a tournament. You may be traveling for vacation. So being able to, it's called like banking sleep, mm -hmm. sleep banking or sleep extension. So preparing yourself right. for less hours of sleep by taking a nap. Okay. I never thought about that. That's planning. Be, exactly. That's cool. Exactly. And so, yes, that does add into the, if you didn't get much sleep the night before, you can maybe take a nap the next day, a short nap the next day okay. to help you know, augment the sleep deprivation. And so wow. naps can be useful. Uh -huh. but just making sure it's early in the afternoon and for a short period of hmm. time. And does that little device track the nap? It does, actually. Really? Oh Without God. even prompting it, it will recognize that you're not moving, that your respiratory rate's going down, your heart rate's going down. Wow. Your body temperature. So body temperature actually is helpful, too, because it tracks your body temperature. Mm. When you sleep, your body temperature actually goes down. Mm. Oh, Okay. And so, and there are several reasons for that, which is why sleeping in a cool room actually helps to helps. augment your sleep as well. Uh -huh. So it's tracking all of that automatically. So it can tell if I lie down for a nap, it knows when I lie down and when I wake up and it'll automatically calculate your nap time. Mm, that is so yes. cool. Wow. Hmm, I'm going to have to look into that. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about insomnia. And, you know, it's a huge subject. We could talk a yes. whole, you know, day about this, but the insomnia that I want to talk about is like those rare moments when all of a sudden you just can't sleep. I mean, is there a common denominator in that? Definitely. So I think we should define insomnia first. Okay. Um, there are three things that define insomnia. So one, it's not being able to fall asleep mm -hmm. at night. The second type is being able to fall asleep but waking up in oh. the middle of the night and not being able to fall back, back. asleep. Oh, yeah. I've had that. Um, and then the third is not getting restful sleep. That's another yeah. that can be described as insomnia as mm -hmm. well. And so for what we call acute insomnia or insomnia that's new, mm -hmm. that's only happening, you know, one or two days, things that can affect that are stress, mm -hmm. anxiety, Maybe an impending infection might would keep you up, but usually it's the opposite where you're going to sleep more because okay. your body's trying to restore itself, huh. kick up that immune system. Wow. But definitely stress, anxiety, things that are going on in your everyday life can mm. cause acute insomnia. Other things that can cause insomnia would be things like thyroid disease, like hyperthyroid, high thyroid. Oh, wow. Because the thyroid can actually increase your body's mechanisms, whether it's heart rate, mm -hmm. metabolism, it causes anxiety in itself. Oh, Things wow. like sleep apnea can cause insomnia too, because you're having episodes where you stop breathing at night. Yeah. That's affecting oh. your oxygenation uh -huh. and that's affecting the quality of sleep. Wow. So if you're having acute insomnia, so you know it's happening, you know, it's new, it's happening like mm -hmm. once or twice. Think about things that are going on in your life now, yep. environmental things, mm -hmm. things that may be affecting your behavior 
and yeah. look at those. Don't automatically think it's like your your thyroid or something. Of course, if you're having other symptoms, <laughs> Don't go to increased heart rate, and exactly. <laughs> Chronic insomnia is described or um, described to be three months, occurring for three months at oh, least wow. three times a week. Okay. So the three and the three. So three times I a week for that. three months or more. That's chronic insomnia. That needs to be definitely worked up by your physician. So you would start with going to your primary care physician. Uh-huh. And then there are actually sleep specialists out there. Mm-hmm. These are physicians who have had additional training in sleep and sleep disorders. Okay. They are sometimes hard to find in certain areas. Yeah. A lot of times pulmonologists are also trained in sleep. Huh. So seeking out one of them may be helpful as well, because there are are sleep testings that Mm -hmm. can be done to see if you actually have one of these sleep disorders. Wow. You know, it's amazing what you mentioned before that it might be your body telling you that something is up or coming. I had COVID about two weeks ago. And before that, I had insomnia three days on a row. I was like up until three in the morning going You know, I would meditate. I would go downstairs. I would go outside. I would drink something. I'm like, okay, maybe electrolytes. Maybe I'm dehydrated. Three nights like that. And the fourth night, boom, I came down with COVID. I was like, wow, well, thank God it was COVID. (laughs) Not me like, you know. Yes, yes. And so definitely listen to your body. If you're noticing you're not getting sleep, try to investigate and figure out what could be different. Yeah, triggering it. Okay. Yes. Wow. Okay. All right. So can you give me some suggestions on how to help our sleep habits? Definitely. So there's something called sleep hygiene, which you may Mm -hmm. have heard of. It's a term that gets used a lot, but a lot of times we don't really know what that means. Yeah. So basically sleep hygiene are things you can do to help promote sleep. So Decreasing distractions mm-hmm. prior to sleep. So no screens or TV okay. you know, two hours before bedtime. Oh, okay. That was my reducing, next question. Yes. Reducing the disturbances in the bedroom. So whether that's light, so making sure that the room mm-hmm. is totally dark, making sure that the room is cool. So turning down the air so it's mm-hmm. cooler at night. Because think about how you may have tried to sleep in a hot room and you can't. Yeah. It's, it's, oh, yeah. You feel like you just sit there and you, and you can't relax. And so cooling down the room is actually helpful to mm-hmm. making sure that you're not eating prior to bedtime uh-huh. or doing high intensity exercise prior to bedtime. Okay. That can also, you know, cause you to have a delay in your sleep initiation. Mm. There are other things, more medical things you can do. There's something called cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia. These are actually therapists who are trained to evaluate your sleep habits and what's going on in your life that may be affecting your sleep. Okay. So it's a good way to personalize a plan of action for targeting sleep issues. Oh, wow. And there are actually apps Mm -hmm. that are available out there. There's actually in-person cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia Hmm. treatment options for right. patients. Oh, wow. But you start with sleep hygiene first. Yeah. Do an assessment of your own sleep and see. There's usually some things we can change. Oh, yeah, there's always something. And there's usually habits that we know we shouldn't do, like yeah. watching TV in the bedroom. But yeah. We still do it anyway. But that's really, and you're like, oh, no, it doesn't affect my sleep. But it really is. Hmm. It really is. So you mentioned two hours. Is that a good window to, like, stop eating and stop watching TV and stop doing, you know. Definitely. That should be your wind down period. You can still do a little bit of work if you need to or read a book. Mm -hmm. If you're into meditation, it's a good time to meditate Mm -hmm. just to start getting your body prepared for sleep. Yeah. I try to give myself an hour. If I want to go to bed, say at 1030, I start winding down at 930. Uh I close my laptop. I do my bedtime routine, yeah. getting to my pajamas, just start to do relaxation things. Mm-hmm. And so that when I lay down, I'm able to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Rushing around, you know, doing all the stuff with the intention of going to sleep at 1030, it's not going to happen. You're going to lay in bed for like 30 <laughs> yeah. minutes. Go ahead yeah. and start winding down. Yeah. Huh. That's actually yeah, really helpful. Discipline. Yes. That's, that's the key. <laughs> Let's see. Let's talk about the circadian rhythm. Is there anything that you can 
you know, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot, but let define it for me. Circadian rhythm is very interesting. All animals, even plants have circadian rhythms. And these are these 24 hour cycles in our body that control and augment all the processes that are going on mm-hmm. inside of us. The most well-known circadian rhythm is the sleep-wake cycle. Okay. So the sleep-wake cycle involves a lot of things. It involves light. It involves mm-hmm. temperature, your intake of food. All of these things affect your circadian rhythm. So okay. basically, in the morning... When you wake up, what's a lot of times waking you up is an increase in body temperature. And this is just your body naturally doing this. An increase in body temperature and an increase in cortisol. Oh, okay. So that's what naturally will wake you up. Conversely happens at night when it's time to go to sleep. Your body will start to cool down naturally. Mm -hmm. You should already be in a darker environment. That's the idea behind turning off the screen. Right. you want to... It's dark outside. Mm -hmm. You don't want to continue giving yourself light stimulus from these devices. Confusing your mind. Exactly. That affects your circadian rhythm. So one thing to really help to reset or or augment the circadian rhythm is when you wake up in the morning, getting 20 minutes of direct sunlight. Oh. So actually getting up and looking at sunlight. Sunlight is the best because it's interesting. The only direct connection between the outside world and the brain is through the eyes, Mm -hmm. through something called the optic nerves. So when you look at light, it's processed through that optic nerve and goes straight to the brain. And that helps to wake your body up and support your circadian rhythm. Uh You may see pets do this. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. That when in the mornings they're sitting in the sunlight or they're sunbathing. Yeah, yeah. The animals know oh, wow. what to do, and they're supporting their circadian rhythm by doing that. And we should really do the same. Huh. That's interesting. I had never heard of that. I'm yes. going to practice that. <laughs> it, actually, it actually helps. You can actually feel your body become more energetic and energized yeah. just by looking at the – having that exposure to the sunlight. And the sun. That's it's incredible. natural. It's, it's natural than, you know, any pill or coffee or anything like that. So talking about the circadian rhythm, how can we support it? Yes. So waking up at the same time every day, Mm -hmm. going to sleep at the same time every day is important. So waking up when it's daylight, going to sleep when it's Mm -hmm. night. Now, things come into play, and this is a whole other topic, but with like shift workers who are working overnight, people who travel a lot and may have jet lag. Yeah. That's a whole separate issue. Mm -hmm. But ways we can support our circadian rhythm if we have normal schedules Mm. is really to, to wake up. And then go to sleep at the appropriate time. Right. Getting that light. Get that root. Okay. Yeah. And not and trying to stay consistent with waking up and mm-hmm. sleeping about the same time. same time. Because even when you're traveling, your circadian rhythm is going to be a little off, especially mm-hmm. if you're going from one coast to the other and you have a three hour difference. Mm-hmm. I've actually done studies with uh, NFL teams, so football teams, huh. and how well their performance was going from west to east. Okay. Because essentially you're losing three hours, so to speak, yeah. and your circadian rhythm is off. So if you're if it's if it's six o'clock um, in California, okay, you're at nine o'clock Over Eastern here. time, and so that can affect because the light is different. It's not what you're used to, and that uh-huh. can affect your sleep, thus affecting your performance. Oh my God! Yeah. So don't travel the day. <laughs> no, exactly. So if you have a big competition or match, and you're going, you know, across even. Going from 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 west to east uh, or east to west mm-hmm. is you you have differences in the time zones. Yeah. Um. So if you can plan and yeah. have a day where you can recover mm-hmm. or do some of that, you know, sleep banking yeah, where you're getting naps. some more sleep That's before. Cool. Yes, yeah, that will help. Wow. All right. Any other important thoughts about sleep that you want to add? So I like to look at sleep as one of the three pillars for health and wellness. So you have exercise Uh and your fitness and your physical training. Mm -hmm. You have nutrition. So what you eat, how you eat. Mm -hmm. You know, we think of, you know, nutrition and exercise as the most important, but sleep should be equally as important. Yeah. There are so many disease processes and medical conditions you can develop 
when you're sleep deprived. And these are all well studied, increased risk of blood pressure elevation, so hypertension, increased wow. risk of developing coronary artery disease, which is plaque buildup in the arteries. Those are things that lead to heart attacks. Oh my God. And needing bypass surgery and yeah. stents. Increases your risk for certain cancers because your immune system actually mm -hmm. kind of rebalances itself and recuperates at night. Yeah. So again, sleep is restorative. And that's when, that's why if you have a lack of sleep over a period of time, you have an increased risk of getting infections. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And so same thing with cancer. If your immune system and your body's processes aren't intact because of lack of sleep, yeah. you're going to have that increased risk of abnormal cells proliferating, which is basically what cancer is. Oh my God. Same thing for wow. diabetes because your body's metabolism yeah. and insulin sensitivity is affected by lack of sleep. Wow. So it's not just about how you feel and your performance mm -hmm. and cognition is also preventing disease. Mm -hmm. And so wow. there's so many things we can do with just sleep to help wow. it live longer. Longevity is affected yeah. by <laughs> lack of sleep too. Oh my God. So sleep is, is one of the easiest things that mm -hmm. you and I are able to control, but it is the, uh, very challenging for people, which is yeah. why we're having a podcast about yeah, exactly. it. <laughs> That's why I wanted to talk about it because I, I, I will be the first one that I needed to change the way I looked at sleep and the way I looked at naps and, you know, the discipline. It's like, no, yes. no, I can get in another hour of staring into the computer. And then you go up and you can't fall asleep for like three more hours. Exactly. You have to be disciplined about it. Just make it a priority. Just like you prioritize other things. Don't make sleep less of a priority than mm -hmm. your nutrition or your exercise. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much. There's so many positive thoughts and, you know, thoughts that you should be thinking, we all should be thinking about, um, about sleep. So anyway, but as always, we could talk forever. Yes. <laughs> um, but promise me you're going to come back and we're going to talk about other things. Definitely. All right. Well, thank you for uh, being with us and we will see you in our next podcast. Bye.